Six Nations 2023, folks. The penultimate match sees Wales travel to France. France still got a chance to win the Six Nations, although their destiny is not in their own hands with the Irish game still to follow. Wales, I mean, basically just trying to finish as high up as they can. They've been virtually written off for this one up against the rampant French side from last week. But um, yeah, we'll go through the squads, some stats, recent results, predictions. You guys can let us know your thoughts on how these two teams may go. Uh, France, number two in the world, have kept things relatively stable. They have had to make a couple of changes. Antonio comes back after serving his suspension. Apparently, Aldeguerre um, had an injury as well, so that kind of made the decision-making a bit easier for Gaultier. So he comes back in at tight head. He's alongside Marchand and Bay, who have been very, very impressive all throughout the Six Nations. Uh, Flamont and Tofu Fenua are the second row. So Tofu Fenua... Uh, his elevation from the bench is another change compared to the side that played last week. Willemser was your guy last week, but with him also being injured, Telfer Fenua has to step up. But Fabian Goltier spoke about him uh, in the press conference from what the Translate service on YouTube told me. And um, he's basically just confident that that guy can do a job. He's been there and done it before. So um, he's another big unit of a man, isn't he? I mean, Flamont is kind of the guy stealing the show in terms of the stats, being one of the top tacklers, scoring a couple of the tries and whatnot. So... Uh, yeah, I think they're a good duo who will match each other pretty well. Uh, the back row is, of course, Olivon and Aldrit. And Aldrit, jeez, he was good last week, wasn't he? He was just in that kind of unplayable Aldrit form that we know he can play at, that he had, maybe hadn't up until last week really reached that level. But um, he was back to that level last week, so absolutely phenomenal. And that's not to say Olivon and Cross didn't play well either, but jeez. It's a, uh, it's a pretty good back row. Uh, Dupont and Insema continue on at 9 and 10. Now, it's an interesting one when you look at the, uh, the French back line. I mean, Dupont does crazy, stupid, unbelievable stuff that only really he can do. But if you're just looking at the kind of bare bones aspects of the French game, and Warren Gitland uh, spoke about it as well, how he expects them to do a fair bit of kicking. Like, who are the main guys who've been, like, clocking up the kick meters in the Six Nations? Well, apart from Finn Russell, who's number one, for kick meters. Dupont is second for kick meters. Uh, Intermark is third for kick meters. And Ramos, who's also at fullback this week, is fourth for kick meters. So, uh, yeah, Gatland is right. You can expect to see a fair bit of boot to ball from this French side. But that's not to say, like, no one ever accuses this French side of playing boring regularly because they don't. Like, I mean, Dupont's got, what, three try assists. Intermark's got three try assists. So, they really do have that kind of all-round game where they can play it safe or they can just do crazy skill things uh, to beat guys one-on-one. -on -one. So, yeah, exciting. Uh, Dante and Fiku continue on in the midfield. Dante was impressive on his return to the squad uh, last week, but, I mean, Fiku has been phenomenal the entire Six Nations. He is the top tackler of all the backline players in the Six Nations thus far. He's been on absolute fire. Peno still on the right wing, 23 defenders beaten for him. He's the second guy in that regard, only behind Van der Merwe for Scotland. And then uh, Dumortier has looked really comfortable on the left wing as well. And then Ramos, like I mentioned, is kicking. Uh, he was really sharp last week, got player of the match. So been a little bit kind of criticized early on, but I think uh, deflected a fair bit of that criticism away with a good performance last week, like I said. So... Yeah, minimal, minimal changes for the French squad. Uh, Malvaka, Wardy, and Falatea are still on the bench. Uh, Shularu comes in as the replacement lock. He's a big unit of a man. Makalu and Luku, 20 and 21. So it's three back replacements with Luku, Moifana, and Jamine there as well. Um, they asked Fabien Gaultier a fair bit about the Irish game. He just basically dismissed those questions and said, this is the job we've got to do. And this is the game we are focused on. Uh, for the Welsh, uh, Gatland continues to make changes. Like, he's very much in rotation mode. I haven't looked, added up the amount of changes that each coach has made from game to game. But without adding it up, I can certainly tell you Wales will be clearly the top side in number of changes made from week on week. And I've mentioned it multiple times. He said this was the plan. He said... I'm going to rotate the senior guys and the young guys, and he's done it once again. Uh, Win Jones, Ken Owens, Tom Francis continue on in the front row, so that's uh, that's steady as you go. There's no changes there. And Ken Owens, I think just quietly, has been doing really well. He's uh, keeping it kind of low-key as captain. He's not getting upset like some of the other captains have been when they've been getting frustrated. And you forgive him for getting frustrated at times because the record of 1-3 is not great. But he's been playing good rugby. 
and um, yeah, just showing his commitment to the jersey, doing what a good captain should do. Uh, the locks are bared in Alan Wynne Jones. So Alan Wynne Jones comes back in. It seems to be a case of he's in one week out the next week, but he continues on uh, after missing out the week before. Wainwright comes in at number six. Uh, Chiunza, they said, has got some off the field stuff. He got some exams or something to be dealing with. Uh, so they didn't really want to call him back up from uh, Exeter. And Jack Morgan uh, got an ankle injury. So it's Wainwright who's been given a chance. And, um, you know, Gatlin backs him to be explosive if he can keep his focus across the 80 minutes. Tipperick's still there at seven, and he's one of the top dominant tacklers of the Six Nations this year. And then Falatau, who is Wales' top tackler, getting his 100th cap, is there at number eight. So big congratulations to him. Uh, Reese Webb, who was great last week, continues on at nine. And then Dan Bigger is back at number 10. So that's a senior 19 combo if you've seen one. Nick Tompkins and George North, speaking of the senior guys, come in for the two junior guys in Grady and... Um, uh, Hawkins. Now, Nick Tompkins' elevation is an interesting one because I'm pleased for Nick Tompkins because I really rate him as a player. Hawkins, though, like he's the top run meters guy, I think, for the Welsh this campaign. So he has really been a bit of a live wire. But the concerning thing is with that Welsh midfield, like it's been defensively exposed a few times. And Hawkins, like tackling rate 68%, way too low for a guy in that position. So I think, especially with Dante and Fiku there, you need someone. Uh, who's going to keep those kind of channels under control. So fingers crossed for Wales that Tompkins and North can do a job. Uh, Adams is on one wing and Dyer is on the other. So that's kind of makes sense. Dyer is your top guy for Wales, like attacking game. Barring two guys above him who aren't playing. So um, Liam Williams uh, is one of the guys and then Hawkins is the other. Both those guys have um, you know, not made the 23. So it's kind of... Uh, yeah, Dyer, who's your third best guy in terms of clocking up run meters and breaking tackles and whatnot. And then uh, Lewis Reese davitt interestingly, up from the bench to play at fullback this week. Gatlin mentioned that he expects a fair bit of French kicking, and we already highlighted the amount of kicks that we get from the likes of Dupont and uh, Intermark and Co. So, um, yeah, he backs Louis' kicking game to, to hold up against the French kicking game, but also he said sometimes there's going to be chances to run it back, and you want to go with a bit of pace. So... If you want gas, I think Lewis Rezabit is certainly your guy for that. Uh, on the bench, Bradley Roberts comes in. Gareth Thomas, Dylan Lewis still there. Daffy Jenkins drops to the bench. Uh, Tommy Riffle still there. Thomas Williams, Owen Williams, and then Lee Halfpenny back into the 23 after missing out with an injury last week. Gallon did mention that partly there's just some sore bodies uh, from last week. So that kind of uh, you know makes sense to give some of these guys a wee bit of a rest. Stats-wise... The French, we all talk up their kind of flashy skills play, and it was on display last week against England, right? And to be fair, like, France do have the most offloads, despite the fact that they play with the least ball. So they have the least possession of all the Six Nations teams thus far, and they have the most offloads. Like, their rate of offloads, like, if you looked at all their passes and how many of those are offloads, their, high, their offload rate is high. More than 10% of their passes are offloads. So, yeah, the, the, the French like to chuck the ball around. But it's also the stingy stuff, like the core stuff that they do really well. Like, they've only conceded 14 clean breaks, all Six Nations, which is the lowest. Uh, and seven of those were against Ireland, who've got one of the better attacks, in case you haven't noticed. So, Wales, on the other hand, have conceded 35, 11 against Italy. Admittedly, they only conceded a couple of tries against Italy, so that does highlight Wales' ability to scramble after having their line broken, but still it's a concerning, concerning number. Um, they do indeed kick a lot, do the French, though. It's, uh, it's one of the kind of key stats of their game as well. Um, Wales is 121 missed tackles is the most uh, in the Six Nations, so that's an area that they will need to not be suffer against France, because France can really make you look silly. But as I highlighted, they did scramble well against the Italians. And um, interestingly... Wales have slowly been kicking more each of their games. Like if you're looking at what the options taken, like what percentage of their game was passing, kicking or running, like the kicking was only like 7% of their first couple of games and then 10% against England and then closer to 20% against Italy. So it feels like if Wales are going to win, they probably should back their kicking game. But then again, they are against France who do the same thing really well. So they'll have to kick smart not just kick for the sake of it. Uh, the recent history between the sides, uh, in the Pivac era, it's been all France. The only one win of the last five games goes back to the last World Cup. So it was a Gatland win, that one-pointer in Japan. 
Uh, all the other games go France's way, although a lot of them very close, man. 13-9, 32-30, that comeback win from the French at the death in 2021 to stop the Grand Slam. Uh, 38-21 is the biggest result, and there's a 27-23 there as well. So um, despite kind of France's great improvement across the last few years under Gaultier, the games have generally been pretty tight affairs. So who knows, this may be one where you know Wales' style is able to throw a bit of a spanner in the works and they don't get opened up like the English did last week. Average score 26-21 across the last five, so yeah, pretty close games. That being said, predictions-wise, France are predicted to give the Welsh an absolute hiding. Uh, 21 points with the bookies and 18 points with the rugby forecast algorithm. It's predicted to be an absolutely one-sided affair. It's on at the start of France. 3.45 local kickoff time, which I think is 2.45 for you guys in the GMT time zone. That's 3.45 in the morning for those of us in New Zealand, which ain't the best, but you do what you do. Uh, Nick Berry, the Aussie, is the ref for this one. You guys let us know your thoughts. Do you think the French are just going to be too good after that big result last week? I mean, we're all focusing on that big result, but remember, like, their game against Italy wasn't that flash. They got beaten by Ireland, so... Um, yeah, it's kind of a balance of of the whole product with the French, not just the kind of last week uh, performance. And for Wales, what do you think? If they play smart, can they cause some problems for France? Or do you think just man for man, they're not going to have the uh, the power to stop them? You guys let us know your thoughts. And, um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys again soon. Yeah.